Okay, so I will also talk about how we want to to have a separate separate the the. Okay, I'll try to from the beginning. Sorry. So the melan. I will try to describe how the Melanox PMD is is built. It's it's built around of uh, libib verbs. It's a um, is a standard API that we already used a long time ago with Melanox. It's uh, used verbs that was used in. Uh, it's also is a standard API of a uh, Open NFV. Uh, mm, sorry, so sorry, sorry. Uh, of um, Open Fabric. Sorry. Uh, so this is something that's used for InfiniBand, and it has the same technology as the guy before talk that we are separating the creation of the queues and all the stuff related to the configuration of the device and letting the, just the processing the packets. Um, so, so the PMD uh, directly access the, the NIC uh, in order for all the data path uh, things like uh, sending a packet, a post sending a packet, receive the receive the packets, but all the control path just say uh, is done through the kernel. So creating rings, controlling the the MTU and all those kind of stuff is done by the kernel. Um, so, and, and unlike other PMDs, the Melanox PMD is still is still another uh, user space application, and we still have the NIC in the kernel, so we still can can continue work with the NET device in the kernel, still configure it. So uh, the control command like um, IP link and ETH tool continue to work. So if you want to configure the MTU, you can do it from the kernel. You want to create virtual functions, you want to manage the virtual functions. Everything work like before because you still have the Linux API to do that. Um, so today, like the, the PMD itself, when you want to do configuring the MTU, it just call for Linux API to do that. Uh, for, so the guy before talked about um, uh, PCI uh, isolation. So for security reason, uh, what Melanox is using is using a kind of separation memory keys. So we can have for each process a different memory isolation. Uh, so that, that's the way that we are separating the kernel from the user space. Okay, so uh, the DBDK can steer traffic to the queues with uh, using RTE flow. Um, so, and all other, all the leftovers of the traffic, what's usually going to to nowhere when in other PMDs. In Mellanox, it's continued to go to the kernel. So if a traffic, if a DPDK application didn't, uh, didn't took a traffic like pings and ARPs, the, the, the kernel will continue to process them and can do the job in edit, and we don't write, and don't need to write the application uh, to do that, so you can write an application, just don't process ARPs, don't process ping, just process the TCP packets that you want. So I will give an example. So you have a Linux uh, IP stack, just a device that is on the same NIC. By default, it configure to get all the packets to his kernel queue. So if you didn't uh, open yet a DPDK application, you still have the network device. You can set the IP address in the, in the Linux. You can ping to this device. 
You can run an SSH, and everything is work as the beginning, as always, sorry. What is happening next when you open a DPDK application and you create a few queues, you can use RTE flow to, to request the traffic for each queues that you want. So let's, for example, you want just to get all the HTTP packet. So you create an RTE flow just to get port 80 and in, in the queue, you will see all those packets, and the DPDK application can handle those traffic. You don't want to handle, you don't need to write anything regarding ARPs, ICMP, or other things. So all this traffic, because it's not steered by the DPDK, it's continue for the lower priority one. So the lower priority one is the kernel. So all the traffic, all the leftover of the traffic, is going to be processed by the kernel. So from customer point of view, this machine will answer to ping, will answer to ARPs, everything is continue to work, and you don't need to maintain a full DPDK stack, a full DP, in the DPDK, you don't need to maintain a, a full IP stack. You can choose what traffic you want to take to the DPDK application. So you can try today, uh, if you take an, uh, for this example, you can write an application, a DPDK application, that just consume, an R, consume the HTTP packets by adding an RTE flow to get only the HTTP packet, and it will continue to work with all the other things by the kernel. Another interesting thing that we can mention. So because of I, this idea, we are not limiting to run a single DPDK application. We can have a few DPDK applications on the same time. One of them can consume the HTTP. The second one can consume all the FTP. And each of, uh, and all together can work on a single and NIC. So you don't need to use any SRA or virtual function. You can have a single NIC in the kernel, a single physical function that can have, can all the ARPs, all the pings can handle by the kernel. And you can just accelerate using DPDK specific application. Any questions? Hi, Ronnie. Um, so, oh. Hi, Ronnie. Um, so is this supported by the upstream kernel driver? So the idea that you can uh, offload some of your queues into user space and have them serviced there? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Me. Uh, so my question is, uh, well, I have two questions. Uh, I don't understand exactly how do you the flow of load to the NIC. Um, who is doing the offload, for example, for these uh, HTTP packets that uh, they are going to a specific queue of the device, the bit or the function. So who is doing that, the DPDK or the NetDev? Because what I don't, I don't understand is you have the control uh, path in the kernel, if I understood that right. Okay, so I will try to explain it again. In the silicon, it's, you have um, a, f a, a table of all the, all the hardware flows. Some of them come from the RTE flow, and some of them come from the kernel. The one from the kernel are in the lower priority. Okay. 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 No, that's it. That's it. I uh, understand that. So you, you have two different paths for adding the flows to the to the device. One from the DPDK. Yeah. So the control. No, they is... are com they are combined. Okay, but because so also the application, the DPDK is using the driver to add the rules to the hardware. 
Yeah, but you, you could add the semi flows for DPDK right. using the NetDev. You could have that. And then you have the full control path with the NetDev. And then, you, uh, you, uh, well, I'm not sure I understand, but I will try. You could, you could add the, the flow for the DPDK apps using the NetDev. Right. So I think that makes sense. More of a sense yes, that you have to have. It, it's, it's done from the RTE flow API. So from DPDK application perspective, you're using the standard RTE flow API. Well, yeah, but the idea is that it's not the DPDK doing the flow. It's something else, the orchestrator or whatever. So the other question is about the, the net dev. So you say this uh, bifurcated driver is upstream, but uh, so are the kernel guys uh, keen to have this kind of bifurcated driver for DPDK? Uh, because I, I guess if, if they realize you are adding that for DPDK, they are going, not, they are going to say no, no way. So I, I wonder how you did that. Um, I, I'm not sure if I understand the question. Can you rephrase it? Well, the question is, uh, you have the NetDev uh, sharing the device with the DPDK. So the NetDev not assigned the device to the DPDK. The DPDK is opening another queues, set of queues. So, but how, how the DPDK app knows which are the queues because it has some co kind of communication with the NetDev? Yes, sure. Okay, so that kind of communication. That, that, that's what I tried I describe here. So the DPDK application is using the verbs API in order to create those queues, in order to create uh, to add the okay. rules to the hardware. So there is a, a communication, of course, between the DPD, the, okay, the PMD. Okay. The PMD is talking to the kernel driver. So, so you, can, you have that, but it's all hidden uh, in the verbs. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, thanks very much. Very interesting.